Hey, I'm Liz and I'll be testing this Gazelle T4 tent for its ease of setup, pack away, spaciousness, rain protection, portability, and much, much more. Before I take you through the actual testing, here's a couple of unboxing shots. First impressions, this tent is huge. If you notice, it's actually taller than I am. Anyway, I bought this Gazelle T4 from REI, though you can get it from Amazon as well. Here's me unboxing it and, well, unboxing it again and just pulling the entire tent out of the box. Okay, now let me take everything out and show you what I got out of the box. So here we have the outer orange carry bag, the tent body with all its pre-attached poles and hubs, the orange rain flag here, 12 stakes, 4 orange guy lines and some instructions, all of which came in this smaller carry bag. Now for the ease of setup, this T4 is supposed to be able to pop open in just 90 seconds. Let's get it all set up and see whether it does what it's supposed to. Okay, so first taking it out of the bag, unfolding the tent flat on the ground and then pulling on the four wall hubs takes about one and a half minutes. Then setting up the rain fly takes another one and a half minutes. And finally, setting up all the tent based stakes and guidelines takes another two minutes for a total timing of five minutes. What if you don't set up the rain fly though? Well, then this tent takes you about 1 minute and 45 seconds to about 2 minutes, so I guess the 90 second pop-up timing isn't too much of a stretch. Anyway, this isn't the setup video, this is the review video, so if you need better instructions and tips on how to set this up on your own for the first time, do check out the step-by-step -step guide on my channel if you need it. Or you can use these instructions to figure out how to set it up on your own. They're actually pretty good and I figured out how to set up every everything from just these instructions. Also, I actually had enough stakes and guidelines for the entire tent, so that's really great as well. But one really minor issue is that the first time setting this tent up, I thought that the last wall was a little more difficult to pop open than the rest, so I had to use quite a bit of muscle for that. As for the pack away process, it's actually very easy as well, and here's another time lapse for you. Including unstaking the entire tent and also removing the rainfly, this tent took me about 6 minutes to take down and pack away back into the carry bag. There are plenty of pros here as well. The carry bag isn't too small, I actually thought it was the perfect size, and also it's really easy to get the air out of the tent and pack it down. I have another step-by-step -step guide on how to pack away this gazelle tent in my separate pack away video, so do check that out if you need more instructions and tips. For the base area, I measured the length of this gazelle T4 to be about 94 inches, and the width also comes in at about 93 and a half inches. This gave me a square base and a total base area of almost exactly 61 square feet. On top of the base area, I also wanted to look at how many single pads I could fit into this Gazelle T4. Here's me inflating some of my sleeping pads, and here's what having two double pads, which is basically equivalent to four pads, looks like. I'll put the dimensions of my double pads on the screen here. Surprisingly, even though my pads are a little wider than regular size, which comes in at about 20 inches wide, they fit nicely into the tent and don't look too squished. On top of that, you even get a bit of gear storage at the foot of each pad right here. And as for the queen bed sizing, well, I can fit just one queen bed into this T4. This mattress is almost the exact size of a queen bed, and this space here is too small to fit another queen bed. But you get lots of storage space, which is great. I'll also remove the queen bed so you can either fit it down the width of the tent or down the length of the tent. And here's what it looks like. Again, there's loads of leftover space too, but not enough for another queen bed. Well, I guess that was just a rambling way of saying that this tent fits only one queen bed. The peak height at the center of this gazelle comes in at about 77 and a half inches. And of course, I'm not very tall, so I can stand completely upright under the peak height. To reach the top of the tent, I have to stretch my arm upwards as much as I can, and here's what it looks like. I also really liked that I could fit pretty thick 9 inch mattresses into the tent as well and still stand under the peak height no problem at all. 
On the other hand, for the lowest height of the tent in the corners, that comes in at a whopping 67 inches. I was honestly shocked at how high it was. That's actually taller than my height. I could stand completely upright under the lowest height as well, still with a few inches of headspace above me. So far, I haven't seen a cabin tent that has a more impressive lowest height. This is the best so far. As for the side walls, they are pretty much almost vertical, which gave me a lot of space to not only stand up everywhere, but also walk around the entire tent. This is me walking as close to the sides as possible, and as you can tell, I have no problem doing that at all. On the outside of the tent, this is what some of the side walls look like, giving this tent a really nice cabin shape. Here's a comparison I want you to make. I'll flash some of my other cabin tents on the screen right here. Let me know what you see. To me, I think these other cabin tents have straight walls at a slight angle. On the other hand, the gazelle looked more like a straight wall at a 90 degree angle up, which is great for us. Why though? Basically, I noticed that the side of the tent is right here. So same as all the other cabin tents, but there's a slight bulge in each of the walls. And here's something you don't ever see in other cabin tents, the hub to hub length. So basically the gazelle has one hub in all four walls right at the center of the walls. I'll talk a little bit more about the hubs and the overall instant mechanism later, but for now, I wanna measure the length of the hub on one wall to the hub on the opposite wall. Here's me struggling with the measuring tape, but when I finally got it to stay in place, I found that the hub to hub legs came in at about 102 inches. And remember the base area of the tent, which come in at only about 94 by 94 inches. So what these hubs are doing is actually to pull the tent fabric outwards, giving you more livable space inside the tent. I'll try to show you what I mean. Here's me standing at the very corner of the tent. I'm gonna stretch my arms straight ahead of me and notice how I'm nowhere close to the hubs of this tent. They're like a good five to 10 inches away, which is really neat. I'll try to do a little experiment here as well. In a lot of other cabin tents, I notice that when I sleep at the sides of the tent, it always feels pretty tight. Even if my arm doesn't touch the wall when I raise it up, and my head doesn't touch the wall as well when I sit up, notice how I'm still pretty close to the wall. At most, I'm a couple inches away. However, in this T4, not only do my arms not touch the wall when I raise them up, they're at least five inches away from the wall, maybe even more. Also, my head doesn't touch the walls when I sit up either, and I still have so much leftover space because of the hubs pulling the fabric out, like maybe half an arm's length. This is easily the most spacious I've felt in a cabin tent, even with four people packed into the tent at the max capacity. This Gazelle T4 has a total of eight windows around the tent. Let me open all the windows first, and I'll show you what they look like. There are two windows on each wall. Most of them are the smaller windows, but two of them are these bigger door windows. The zipping experience for both these windows was good. There were no snags at all and it felt pretty smooth. And as always, all these zipping clips that you see on the screen here are in real time. One thing I didn't quite like about the bigger door windows though, was that it comes with two different layers for the window fabric and the door fabric. So to get this window open, I first needed to unzip the window layer, then unzip the door layer, tie the door layer up with these two tie downs on the outside, and then zip up the window layer. This entire clip was in real time. Notice how long it takes just to do that. Also, both the zippers to the door and the window layer are black, and I kept pulling on the wrong zipper. Not quite as user-friendly as the smaller windows. Oh, and I noticed that the zippers for the smaller windows are not branded, while the bigger door windows are YKK, and that's probably because there's a whole lot more zipping and unzipping when it comes to the bigger windows. On the other hand, these smaller windows have zippers that don't unzip all the way. So when the window is open, there's this little pocket at the bottom of the back window to tuck the fabric in, which is great for user friendliness. I didn't even have to take the fabric out of the pocket to zip them up. And here are more real-time clips. 
As for the size of the windows, the smaller window measured about 19 by 21 inches, while the bigger door window measured about 28 by 53 inches. And as for the mesh, it looks to be more like regular mosquito netting rather than micro mesh. As you might have noticed from the previous section, there are two doors in this T4. Both of them are these D-shaped doors. There's one door here at one corner of the tent, and there's another door here at the opposite end of the tent. I think you might have noticed this as well, but these doors aren't really that big. Here are the dimensions. Each of these doors have a longest length of about 26 inches at the center, but they really taper down at the top and the bottom. So even though the door has a longest length of about 50 inches, notice how little space there is at the bottom. I did have to get used to not tripping over the door when I first started using this tip. Each of these doors also measure just 56 inches from the ground to the top of the door. So of course, even I had to keep ducking to get in and out of this tent through these doors. Because of the size of the doors as well, you have to first bring your queen mattress in deflated and then inflate it inside the tent. You won't be able to bring it in inflated like you can with other tents. In the previous section, you also saw the zipping experience from the inside of the tent, but what about the outside of the tent, which is usually more problematic? Let me show you some real-time clips on the screen here, and as you can see, there's actually zero snags with the doors of this tent, so overall, a very good zipping experience. That was really surprising to me, especially because I noticed that the storm flaps on the outside were pretty big and beefy. For my other tents, these types of storm flaps always end up trapping the zipper, but it doesn't happen with this T4 at all. I think it's been very well tested and very well designed. And I also really liked that these door zippers are YKK zippers. You can see the engraving on the zipper right here. But one thing I didn't quite like about these doors is that there are these two tie downs. It takes some time to get them tied up. And I think having toggles like those you see with most other tents would be much more user friendly. One tip I have for you here, if you don't need to use the door windows, is to keep the window layer tied up. That way you don't have to keep unzipping and zipping up the window layer every single time you open and shut this door. Another tip I have for you here, if you find a door too tight, you can loosen it up by restaking this stake right next to the door. You might have staked it out a little too tautly when setting it up. Moving on to storage options, we'll first start with the pockets, and there are six humongous pockets in this T4. Two of the walls have two huge pockets, while the other two walls have just one pocket each, totaling six pockets for the entire tent. The bottom pocket measures 18 by 15 inches, which is already pretty big, while the top pocket is even bigger, measuring almost 59 by 26 inches. This is the longest length and longest width, and it comes in this huge triangle shape. Here's what it looks like when I stand beside it, and I can even stick my entire arm in. Only a small bit of the pocket has been sewn down here. The rest of the sides are openings that you can stuff your gear in. On top of the pockets, I even got a provided gear loft and it measures about 20 by 20 inches in this square shape. Each corner of the gear loft has a toggle which you can hook up to the four loops at the top of the tent. And here's a close up of both the loop and the toggle. Apart from the gear loft loops, there isn't like a dedicated lantern loop inside the tent, though there is this strap hanging down from the top hub which you can use to hang a lightweight lantern on it. This is a black diamond emoji and I highly recommend not hanging anything too heavy on the strap because you don't want the hub to get pulled down by the weight and hit someone on the head. It does hurt, trust me, I made that mistake. But still, a lightweight lantern is good enough for decent lighting at night. And even with the gear loft in place, you can still kind of fit a small lantern in there, which is kind of nice. Apart from the pockets, gear loft, and loops in this tent, I didn't see any other storage or features. Like for example, there's no power port in this tent. On hot days, which is usually the weather that I'm camping in, I like to take the rain fly off to get a little more ventilation through the ceiling mesh, and here's what it looks like. That coupled with the windows and doors makes for an overall decent amount of ventilation inside the tent. But because of all the ceiling mesh, this is strictly a three season summer camping tent and I wouldn't use it for like winter camping or anything else. 
Now, this tent is pretty good for hot weather, but what about for rainy weather? Well, that's where the heavy rain test comes in. For this rain test, I used a water hose to simulate heavy rain, which looked like this, and I did this for one full hour. After the hour was up, I found some parts of the top mesh panels to be a little damp, and there were also a few droplets of water on the tent floor because it dripped down from the mesh. And that's because the rain fly isn't very long, and it doesn't really overlap the top mesh panels by very much. Here's a look at what the rain fly gap above the mesh looks like in the rain. With heavy enough rain and the wind at the right angle, it will blow right under the rain fly and into the tent. Anywho, that's not the only problem I saw with this tent. Another problem is these pockets right here, and after the rain test, I noticed that this pocket seam here has been soaked with water. And the last problem is these hubs in the center of each wall. They were also a little damp from the inside. The thing is, it's not like these weren't factory taped or waterproofed. I actually checked the entire tent and all the seams that were not covered by the rainfly were fully and perfectly taped. But look at these pocket seams. Notice how the seam taping covers only the top of the pocket. The rest of the pocket wasn't taped. And here's what the pocket seam looks like from the outside. A lot of water flows over it in the heavy rain and then goes into the seam and soaks the pocket on the inside. There isn't a lot of water in the seam after one hour. I'd give this tent about five to maybe 10 hours of heavy rain before it soaks the entire pocket and starts leaking into the tent. And for the hubs, the seams around the hub are taped, so I know Gazelle did its best, but you can't really tape the hub and it is exposed to the outside with these hub loops on the other side. So same issue with the pocket seams that I talked about before. Again, I'd give this tent maybe 5 to 10 hours of heavy rain before any real leaking issues. The only real way to solve these issues is to have a longer rain fly and not have any of these outside elements exposed to the rain. When it comes to rainy day ventilation, there's only a small gap in the rainfly and there isn't a vent system, so no roof vents, no rainfly vents, no floor vents, or anything else. Also, there's no way to open any of the windows in the rain. The rainfly doesn't cover much of the windows at all, and all the windows were soaked from top to bottom. When it comes to wind protection, I don't usually camp in strong winds, so I didn't exactly test that, but this tent was able to take light winds well, especially when all guyed out. Now when it comes to the guilings, there are four of them around the entire tent, and I would really recommend guying this entire tent out in moderate to strong winds, because if the wind's strong enough, it could push on the hub and your tent will fold in, which is not something you'd want. I noticed that the rainfly has these small grommets, so I used that to attach the guy lines. But on hindsight, I think I should have attached them to these hub loops at the center of each wall on the outside instead to provide more stability to the hubs. One thing I really liked here is that these hub loops aren't attached to the rainfly, so you can guy out the entire tent without the rainfly. But one thing I didn't quite like is that the guilings are not reflective at night. It would be a huge improvement to add a small reflective strip on each guiling, like quite a few higher end tents have. Now for quality, I mainly looked at the materials of this tent. The tent body and the rainfly is made of 210 denier Oxford weave polyester and regular polyester respectively with a 2000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. And on top of that, they have UPF 50 plus rating as well. As for the window and door zippers, I went through that in these previous sections on the screen here. Also very impressive, but the mesh isn't micro mesh like most other higher end tents have. This is supposed to be tight weave mesh, but it feels like regular mosquito knitting that most budget tents like Coleman have. And honestly, I was shocked to find that the poles were made of fiberglass. It was so sturdy, I thought they were aluminum or something. I do wish they were aluminum or steel instead of fiberglass though. These stakes are these V-stakes. Here's what one of the guidelines looks like. That's the tensioner there, and I found the stuff sack fabric to be pretty good quality as well. I was completely floored by the quality of the flooring, no cheesy pun intended, so I thought it deserves its own section. 
First up, the material of the flooring is superb. It's a super thick 300 denier Oxford weave polyester, and it also has a 5000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. And by far the most mind blowing pro of the flooring is that it's entirely removable. Let me show you how to do it. At each of the four corners of the tent, there's this flooring toggle that you gotta remove from the loop at that corner. And then after that, the rest of the flooring is connected to the tent body via a super long velcro strip all around the entire tent. It's super user friendly, I used almost no strength at all to rip it off the velcro. And yeah, basically you can take it out of the tent entirely and that's the T4 without the flooring. Need, right? I really like this for two main reasons. The first is that unlike most instant tents without a removable flooring, the Gazelle T4 makes it super easy to clean the flooring once you remove it from the tent. And the second reason is that when I was packing up the tent, I could just undo a part of the floor so that the air will come out more easily and it usually takes me less than 20 seconds to compress the entire tent down. With other instant tents, it usually takes a few minutes to do so, which is way longer. That is so ingenious and is one of the main reasons that I love this T4. Putting the flooring back is a little more complicated than just removing it, but I still found it to be really user friendly. So basically all I had to do was to line up these little orange tabs on the flooring to the orange tabs on the tent body. There are four of them around the tent, one on each wall, and I like to make sure that none of them are off alignment at all, like this one over here. I did find that I usually have an excess amount of flooring so I just spread it out across the tent, usually in the corners, and I usually manage to get a pretty tight seal. And one more point, with most other cabin tents that I have, a lot of them start leaking at the corners of the flooring first. However, with this T4, notice that on the other side of the top floor, the tent body actually fully covers the top floor. So I had absolutely no issues at all with the flooring, not even at the corners. And that's after a whole lot of rain on the entire tent and especially at the corners. So this flooring has much better rain protection than in other cabin or instant tents. As for the overall instant mechanism, it's really incredible as well, and I'll talk about the hub and pole structure of this tent. First, this Gazelle T4 has not one, not two, not three, not even four, but a whopping five hubs all around the entire tent. Four on the four walls of the tent, and the last hub is this top hub. I'll try to get some shots of the top hub right here, but I think it looks like all the other four wall hubs. Each of the wall hubs have this like foam padding at the top secured to the hub with velcro. Please do not remove this because it's here to protect your tent and you don't want the hub to poke a hole into your tent fabric. Now on top of the insane number of hubs, this T4 also has poles running all around the entire tent from hub to hub. This includes not just the top hub, but also all the wall hubs. This is one of the wall hubs and the poles run all the way up to the top corner of the tent. Here's what it looks like from the outside as well. It's connected with more poles which are connected to the top hub. So loads of interconnected poles. So unlike other tents instant mechanisms, which usually is made of just a central hub and also four elbow joints, I'll flash some of these tents on the screen here. These can sometimes be a little flimsy and floppy from the inside as well due to the minimal number of hubs and poles. On the other hand, this T4 is super sturdy, it holds up really well, and I actually had much more livable space inside this tent than in other instant tents. But the thing is, because of all the poles and hubs on every wall, the doors and windows are relatively small. Especially the door, it has a little bit of a weird shape where it tapers down at the end, so you might have to get used to being careful and not tripping over it. The doors also can't be bigger than they currently are, so naturally there's not as much cross ventilation in this T4 than in other tents with two much bigger doors. The stitching and seams in the T4 were very good quality and double stitched. Throughout the entire tent, I didn't find any inconsistent areas or loose threads in the tent at all. Moving on to portability, I measured the pack size of my Gazelle T4 to be about 68 by 13 by about 10 inches. The carry bag has one handle at one side, another handle at the other end, 
and the main handle, which also has extra padding, is right in the middle for easy carry. And this T4 weighed about 34 pounds for everything. For pros, this Gazelle T4 has a super high quality instant mechanism. It actually does pop open completely in less than two minutes. I found it incredibly easy to do so. I had no issues at all, none that I can think of. And I think this is easily one of the best instant tent mechanisms that I've ever seen. There are so many more hubs and interconnecting poles than my other instant tents, which also adds to the high quality nature of this tent. On top of that, packing this tent away is super easy. For most other instant tents, I do struggle with compressing the tent small enough to fit back into the carry bag, but this tent was remarkably easy. 20 seconds to compress the tent. Actually less, no joke. And that's because of the removable flooring, which I ripped out a section of to make it much easier to get the air out of the tent. This is one of the key features of the T4. It's the only instant tent that has this, and you can check out this test on the screen here for way more info on this. Another pro of this tent is the incredible amount of livable space inside. Even at the lowest height in the corners of the tent, it was still taller than I am and I could stand up there no problem at all. On top of that, the hubs pull the tent body outwards, making it feel more spacious inside. Again, I conducted quite a few experiments on this tent when it comes to spaciousness and livability, so do check out these tests on the screen here if you happen to skip past them. I also thought that the attention to detail was superb as well. Most of the space around the entire tent was well maximized with loads of features and ventilation on every wall. There are one to two pockets on every wall, even a gear loft at the top, and that's way more storage than any other instant tent I have. There are also windows on every wall and even two doors, and that's despite there being so many hubs and poles on every wall as well. The materials of this tent are also superb, they're much thicker than any other family camping tent that I've had, and that includes tents, even from REI and the North Face, and the thickness of this gazelle ranges from a whopping 210 denier to 300 denier polyester. And it's also one of the rare few tents I have that have a UPF 50 plus rating as well. Rain protection in this tent is also decent, it can take you through light rain, moderate rain, and even a few hours of heavy rain, but here's where I move into the cons. This tent isn't exactly the most bomb-proof, especially for folks who love camping in the heavy rain. There were a few small problem areas that I noticed, and I estimate the limit of this tent in heavy rain to be anywhere between just 5 to 10 hours. You can check out these tests on the screen here for way more details, or you can just check out my separate rain test video as well for all the info that you might possibly need. And rainy day ventilation isn't the best, the windows can't be open, and there are no vents as well. Another con is that the packed size is freaking humongous. I mean, if you just look at it, it's taller than I am, which really shocked me when I first bought this tent because I wasn't expecting that. Okay, so this is a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle that I have. Here's a four person REI Skyward cabin tent. This is a six person instant cabin tent from Ozark Trail. And this is the Gazelle T4. I thought that the packed size was a little bit ridiculous. It's longer than a six person instant tent. And compared to a 10 person instant tent that I tested in the past, the Gazelle is longer as well. It's actually a whopping 18 inches longer. And the Gazelle is also about double the size of a regular four person cabin tent. Another con that I can think of is that the Gazelle isn't cheap. It's one of my more expensive instant tents. But the good thing here is that sometimes Amazon, REI, and other retailers will run good sales on them, so it's still worth checking out, especially if there are sales going on. One thing I was really disappointed about was the warranty. I thought that something as expensive as this T4 would have a lifetime warranty, but I was shocked to find that it was only a one-year warranty. That's more like something Coleman would give, and that's a budget-friendly tent brand. But as long as you follow the instructions that I gave you in all of my Gazelle videos, especially the setup and pack away videos, you take good care of your tent, this tent should last you for quite a few years and you shouldn't need to use the warranty. Of course, I'd highly recommend this T4, it blew my mind and it's easily the best instant tent I have. And here's exactly how I know that. I tested the T4 against more than five of the best instant tents in the market in this video on the screen here. I'll put it up when it's ready, so do check 
check it out. Thank you for watching this review video. You're awesome and I'll see you in the next one.